Hello everyone, welcome back to JNSQ Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I wondered what the Venture Star would be capable of in this scaled system. This is the full-sized Venture Star. This is the one that carries 20 tons to low Earth orbit. And currently we have actually 27 tons in it. Well, we could easily carry more to this scale low Kerbin orbit if we wanted to. But instead of that, we're going to try to carry this Skylon crew pod over to the moon and we're going to try to have the Skylon crew pod land on the moon uh, and then get back up to the Venture Star and for the Venture Star to carry it back to Kerbin. Uh, this is, I think it was 3.2x scale, uh, 2.5 or 3.2, I still haven't looked it up yet. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have a certain amount of Delta V and I'm not entirely sure where this will work. It'll be quite obvious as we go along that this is a close call, I believe, and so we will see. Uh, it's not going to be a close call as far as getting into orbit is concerned. We need about 5,000 for that. We'll have 3,800. I think we're going to need 1,500 to transfer over to the moon and then some to capture. And then the pod's going to go down and then the pod's going to come up again. Now the pod's going to be lighter after that because it's going to have used up its fuel. And then we'll have to see. <laughs> then it has to break orbit and come back. And then this might need to air break. But anyway, for now, uh, let us turn on SAS, throttle up, and ignition of the Aerospike engines, this Venture Star. For those who don't know about the Venture Star, it was a single stage to orbit space plane design that uh, used hydrogen and oxygen, and it has these RS2200 engines. And here we go with seven of them. And launch. So this is my own model of it, of course. I think I released it in a video at one point or another. Probably should have locked those control surfaces, or wings. They flap around too much. We are past the speed of sound. Interesting that our course basically goes along the coast here. Uh, I decided I had needed control surfaces above and below the aerospikes, not the best thing. So Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Valentina are in the crew pod. It was meant also to be an escape pod for Skylon, so the bay doors would actually blow up, uh, blow off and allow that thing to escape. It's got thrusters capable of that. They were modeled after the abort engines of CST-100 the RS-88s. This thing looks like it's flapping its way to orbit. Okay, okay. But unfortunately we have to sort of go like that. And I'll have to remember to undo this. It does have a fuel cell. We will need that. And it has built-in Hydrolox RCS. Also some OMS engines on the edge. So the thing is, in real solar system, the Venture Star's capabilities are quite limited. After all, 20 tons to low Earth orbit isn't the greatest thing in the world. Uh, so I don't get to use it very often, even though it's nifty. It's a single stage to orbit space plane that is reusable and everything. Uh, but yeah, 20 tons can be quite limiting sometimes. But around here, around here is a different story. It's not really 20 tons. It's hopefully 20 tons to lunar orbit and it can come back. Duna is right there, tantalizing. That is a different sort of thing, though. We don't have food, water, and oxygen for that. There we are. Venture Star's uh, heat system is not normal tiles, it's actually metal tiles. And special uh, diamond shaped metal tiles. Okay, selling fuel down. That is something we need to do with re realism overhaul and real fuels. We do need to do ullage, selling the fuel down before igniting the engines. Make Jeb will automatically make sure 
Didn't quite account for the fact that I would throttle down here, but it should be alright. High G-force and everything. The volumetric clouds definitely work better at this scale than in real solar system. I think we can probably agree that they're looking pretty good here. I mean, they look better in orbit. They always look better when you're in the atmosphere. They always look good in the atmosphere. But in orbit, in real solar system, they haven't been looking the greatest. This, this is more like what we would like. So, that leaves us with 2,200. Seems plenty, to be honest. And in fact, maybe enough to not only return, but capture into orbit, bring ourselves down before trying to land. Don't even need too much air braking, which is good. I mean, heat tolerance wise, this is going to have no problem air braking because it's, it has dealt with the heat of Earth's re-entry. Okay, that's about the correction that I want. We'll keep it equatorial. We could have had it as a polar orbit, but it's annoying to get out of polar orbit, so... We'll just keep it equatorial. The Kerbin system is still sort of optimized for that. Even though our launch site at Tampico puts us into a, like a one degree inclination because it's further south than the main launch site. Attack life support consumption of stuff seems nominal, so maybe attack life support is working fine. Uh, it's just that it wasn't putting stuff into the EVA suits particularly well. Yep, Kerbin's looking good. Kerbal health. Dangerously low. I don't know. I guess that might have been the training. I don't know. I, I don't know about Kerbal Health. Kerbal Health is doing too much. I think I'll have to remove it. Maybe I'll just go with Kerbalism. The, in real solar system, I've had trouble with Kerbalism and its radiation limiting us. But in this system, hopefully it won't. Because the durations aren't, that, aren't quite as long as in real solar system. So maybe I'll put Kerbalism in. I think I must have forgotten to bring in the interior of the crew pod because we probably ought to be able to see them so I think oh no he died of poor health see now that's going too far I don't understand this dying of poor health when we've got food water and oxygen and everything the water is not being consumed because it's uh, being generated by the fuel cell but yeah I don't know about this business poor health suddenly the reason I put it in was because JNSQ said it was compatible with Kerbal Health. I don't know how compatible it is. <laughs> well, time to try out the OMS engines. Let's shut the big ones down. Now, the OMS engines don't have the same efficiency. As we can see, we've been cut down to just 2,000 here. I think the real plume that they're supposed to have is just not being caught. These are operating at 424 second ISP as Hydrolox engines. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's go on to the moon. Kerbin still looks like a decent size out here. Oh, who is it now? Um, rad storm of nominal magnitude just hit Kerbin, affected Kerbals. I don't even know what BED is. But, okay. See, it doesn't have the little... Okay, is there a Kerbal health dialogue here? Okay, what percentage of their... Oh, no, clicking on that... Okay, let me see. Maybe it's only affectable here. Nope, that doesn't pop up. See, Kerbalism will give me a percentage. I need a percentage of, you know, how much 
BED can they have? I don't have that information. That's an interesting sun flare. I have a feeling that that sun flare is hiding the moon in there somewhere. Yeah, the moon is all dark on this side. Okay, moon. There we go. I will use not the OMS engine engines, but the center one here. These have five ignitions total. So actually maybe I'll use two and save that one for later. Okay, is MegJeb using uh Oh, it's using the better controller, that's why it's puffing all over the place. Hybrid controller is what we want. Well, the moon still looks a bit on the smaller side. Okay, selling fuel down. And ignition for capture. Maybe it's not going to be as close as I was concerned about. If we wanted to get back into low carbon orbit, it would be close. Or maybe not even doable. I mean, uh, if we wanted to use the engines to get into low carbon orbit. And I think we do. So in that respect, it is close. Okay, that is a good enough orbit for now. So let's open it up. Okay, apparently we can't control the Venture Star right now. Which is weird. I guess it's because we don't have comms. We can't control the Venture Star right now. The Venture Star does, of course, have, you know, remote control capability because it was never meant to be crewed. You can tell. There's no cockpit up there. The first version I made of it had a cockpit, but then people noted that it wasn't supposed to have one, so I made the one without a cockpit. This has 2,673 altogether. It's meant to be a little bus. Also an escape pod. You can see where the engines are down here. And again, it's supposed it's like an abort pod. And we are going to want to invert control from here. If we can. Um I guess we can't do that from the docking port. Yeah, none of those is what we want. So I'm gonna have to do things backwards. Technically speaking, we should probably have some other landing gear. And once that once we see this works, I'll make sure to add it next time. <laughs> but right now, we're just landing on its bottom. Once we see the margins on it. I think we'll have plenty of margin because we're only going at less than 750 meters per second, so. And there's no way I can tip this over, right? Now this is hypergolic, so this is normal. This is correct. Since their abort engines are pretty powerful, but they do throttle. There's Kerbin. Okay, maybe it doesn't throttle enough. <laughs> Oh uh, boy, this is going to be tough. Well, at least I don't see any ignition limit. Oop, I started going up. No, 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 no. Kill rotate. Oh, this is all pear shaped. Uh... Oh, yeah, they're too powerful. Oh, oh, no, no, no. You can't do this. No, no. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I don't think we can EVA out. I'll have to work on that. Anyway, they landed. Let's get back up. Okay, show grid overlay. No. Okay. Alright, let's try and catch up to the Venture Star. 
Okay, I've got the uh, rendezvous information that I like. So, let's go. Whoa, gosh. Okay, that, that's good enough. <laughs> it's enough of that. Uh, using these engines, given that they're aboard engines, might be, might be too much for this purpose. Oh, is it the wrong way? Should be going west, yeah. Oh, but we're reversed. Oh gosh. Right. Because of the docking port orientation. Okay, well, we don't need that much. Wow, the relative inclination, I managed to get pretty darn good. Even though I was sort of worried about other things. Like, the fact that the G-Force was like, six. Okay, well, we will want to adjust a little bit. Just using RCS to get the closest approach distance closer. That looks great. There we are. And the bus continues. Tiny relative velocity. I'll just shut down the engines now. I think that's the open bay right there. So yeah, this is pretty good. Okay. That's us approaching at 2 meters per second. Can't really target anything yet. Okay, in we go. For realism overhaul, we do 1.2 meters per second or so. Technically, I shouldn't use the RCS in the bay. But, whatever. Okay, we will disarm the RCS. Close up the bay. And let's see if we can go home. Okay, I'm a little bit late in turning here. Are, are you, is your RCS working properly? I don't see it puffing, but okay. So now the question is how much I want to reserve for descent and landing as far as our fuel is concerned. Well, getting into a low, low orbit is probably too much. I'll get about there, and then we're going to have to see. Okay, departing the moon. Or maybe I'll do it the reverse. Let's try an arrow break first, and then use the fuel to correct after. I'm going to go with 55. Okay. Back to Kerbin. Uh-oh. More Kerbal Health messages. Bob Kerbin has acquired a serious injury condition. Try not to make things worse and have Bob Kerbin wash his hands before touching the wound. Right. Ah, oh, boy. They're prone to injury, these Kerbals, apparently. I thought they were more resilient. In theory, the aerodynamics of this are the same as in real solar system, right? It's far, but then the atmosphere is different. But then realism overhaul might be changing the atmosphere anyway, but most, mostly that would be real solar system. So there's a lot going on. It all depends on whether it can hold its nose up or not. We're in the atmosphere and tilted a bit. We are glowing red. Okay, what kind of... Well, you're, we're using all the things. <laughs> That's probably not great. And yeah, I can't hold 60 degree pitch. I could probably do it 
uh, normal trajectory, but for some reason on these lunar or lunar return trajectories, things have more trouble. We are slowing down. But maybe I should have been more aggressive in bringing it in deeper into the atmosphere. We'll see. Okay, so what we got out of it was getting down to this level, which looks more than it really is. I think I'll give it one more pass like this first. We probably do have some boil-off going on, right? One would think. I did have MLI layers and everything, but boil-off is a thing that happens. RF boil-off. Boil-off is happening. Quite a lot, too. 3.7 kilowatts. 29 kilograms per hour. So yeah, we do have boil off. That is a consideration. Oh, one reason why we might have had less ability to control ourselves is I didn't increase this back up again. I think I only added at 12 for these. They are big. Very nice. A little bit stylized to look right now, I feel, with the clouds. Maybe it's the lighting. Okay, we're back in space again. Well, that didn't help a whole heck of a lot, but I'm gonna accept that we'll use 200 to do the final bit of deorbiting. So, we will, at Apoapsis, get into a nicer orbit. Oh, I bet all the Kerbals have died. Uh, dangerously low, exhausted. Right, okay, we'll try and get him back. Only gonna be Jeb and Val at the end of this. Okay. 100 kilometers. Ooh, that boil off is doing more than I thought. Okay, ignition. Okay, I don't think I can make it nice and neat. We we're running out of propellant there. So, I'll just try my best here. These actually take quite a long time to bring our orbit down. <laughs> okay, I'll go with 20 kilometers. Uh, well, the periapsis is there. Mm, I think maybe I'll just go with zero. But we don't have that much fuel left. On the bright side, the RCS can use the residuals. So even if there's untapped delta V, we can use it. Eight. All right. Let's see. All right, properly oriented. Not that much remaining in the tanks. Let's see how it goes. But then again, the RCS shouldn't require too much. Of course, if it's going all over the place, I guess I can't fizz warp. No, we can already see it. That makes it seem like it's coming a little bit too soon. But that's just the marker. I really sort of don't want the markers as prominent, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Okay, yeah, that doesn't seem to be coming in. Let me try and max out here. Uh-oh, it's going up. No! Don't do that. Are we gonna end up on the island airfield? There's apparently an air base there. Well, even in JNSQ, this part takes a while. Well, I don't like that the markers prop up when the thing is like on the opposite side of the horizon. I'm not gonna try and roll around. 
Let's create a waypoint to that thing. Gonna try and lean over. Uh, the roll is already being used too much. Forget it. Okay, I'm gonna try and pitch down and take atmospheric autopilot control. Okay, atmospheric autopilot enabled. Still going very fast though. Turning is not easy like this. And atmospheric autopilot isn't letting me turn with the full capabilities of the thing. Uh, I'd want to land on a runway, but I don't know if I can. I'm going to try using just SAS. Uh, oh, it's not the most stable system like that. Okay, forget it. Atmospheric autopilot. <laughs> uh, no, no. I need some flyby wireness. No, we are not able to divert to any of those locations. I will just be satisfied landing somewhere. Hmm. Our pitch authority is not good. <laughs> uh, we're, we're plunging into the ground. Okay, I need to use SAS. I think maybe I should have used it earlier. Uh, I don't think Atmospheric Alpha had my best interest in heart there, and it might be too late. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, come on. Like I said, I put those extra control control surfaces because we really needed... Ooh. We really needed the extra pitch authority right there, you see. But maybe I should have tuned these so that we had more than 12. I think maybe around here, maybe I need 20 on those. But anyway, it survived. But that was not the ending that I was lo really looking for. Are they still in? I don't think they're still in there. I think they got destroyed. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Otherwise, otherwise we'd have food, water, and oxygen. I think the pod inside the bay got crushed. Alas. So um, Delta V wise, it's a possibility. Uh, it needs some more practice. But anyway. That is the first time I've used this in JNSQ with Realism Overhaul, and it has it shows promise. It's an interesting way to use it. It's a lot more usable than it is in Realism Overhaul. I mean, you, I can still use it, but again, its capabilities are somewhat limited. But anyway, for now, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.